Hey guys, it's Kelsey the Happy Hobbit, and I am here today to do a little review. I am reviewing something that I don't physically have to show you because I'm reviewing my first audiobook experience. I'm really just going to talk about what it was like to do my first audiobook, which audiobook I picked, and what I thought about that book. And then if I plan to continue listening to audiobooks. Like, did I even like it? Let's find out! I recently subscribed to Audible for the first time. Um, and I've heard really mixed reviews on it and the people who use it. Um, some people just don't find that it's worth it. And I have now come to my own decision on what I think about the matter. So I downloaded a free trial of Audible and I really liked the Audible layout. I feel like there's so many books in their library to pick from. And with it being a free trial, I did get to pick whatever I wanted with my one free credit. So I ended up picking The Store, which was written by James Patterson and Richard DeLalo. They were kind of co-authors for this story. And it was narrated by Graham Halstead. So I had never read a James Patterson book, and the premise of this one sounded really, really interesting, so that's why I picked it. I'm going to talk a little bit first about how I felt about an audiobook. And I actually loved it. I didn't think that I would like listening to a story versus actually holding it in my hands. And I thought that because I would be driving, I would be distracted and I wouldn't like retain any of the information. And there were very few times that I had to rewind. They have like a 15 or it's a 30 second rewind feature so that you can just really quickly backtrack what you might have missed. I thought that was great. I only found myself having to rewind or backtrack a couple of times throughout the book. And that's like if there was traffic or something that I needed to be paying attention to pretty, you know, intensely. I really, really liked the listening aspect of an audiobook. After using Audible though, like the more, the further I got into the book, I was like, oh gosh, like this goes by quickly because I'm a slower reader and obviously listening to a book is going to go by much quicker than reading it for somebody who's slower at it. So I started to realize, oh my God, I'm going to need another book real quick to listen to because I'm going to finish this. And looking forward to whether or not I kept the Audible app, I started to figure that not only would I have to pay that monthly membership, but I would also have to either use my one credit a month and then continue to purchase books on there, which are rather expensive in my opinion. I saw like several that were like $30. And on top of the already $15 membership, I just couldn't see myself wanting to keep doing that. That was kind of a bummer and I was like, wow, this could get really expensive. And I had already known that a few other alternatives exist out there for audiobook listening that don't cost anything, which is great. So that is how I kind of felt about that. It's a little too expensive and this is minor, but the app did crash on me, which was maybe just like a minor fluke, but it kind of pissed me off <laughs> because what happened was I had gotten in my car and I went to start playing it and it couldn't locate where I was in the book anymore. It Like it would not play. It actually went all the way back to the beginning and I was at the very end at this point. I only had like an hour and a half of listening left and it rewound, rewinded, it went back all the way to the very beginning. And I would try to fast forward and go by chapters and it said the chapters couldn't be found anymore. And I was like, what the hell? What, what do you mean you can't find the chapters anymore? I had to uninstall the app, reinstall the app, which wouldn't even take my password for Amazon. So I had to request a new password. It was a mess. And yes, maybe that sounds dramatic, but it was just enough of a frustration that I was like, if I'm going to pay $15 a month for something, it shouldn't do that. That's kind of how I felt about audiobook listening through Audible. Now, flash forward, I, you know, I have another service that I'm using now that I'll tell you about at the end, and I'm already listening to another audiobook, and I think that's what I'm going to stick with. 
Audible might be great for other people's whose pockets are better off than mine, and that's fine. But for me, eh, it's probably going to be a cancel on that free trial. The next thing I wanted to talk about was the book review, actually. I'm going to try and keep this spoiler free. The store, I thought, was a very interesting concept. The whole point behind this book is that there is this major corporation called The Store who pretty much oversees everything in the United States. The best way that I can really think to link this to something is Amazon. The store keeps track of your purchases. You, you can literally purchase anything from, through the store. Literally like anything that you could think of, you can buy through the store, which sounds very much like Amazon. So this big corporation kind of rules the US and everybody loves it because it's so convenient. This book follows the character Jacob Brandeis who is married with two kids and him and his wife are both writers and they've kind of been shot down for the books that they were writing and they just couldn't catch a break and they were living in New York and it just, it just wasn't working for them. They just kept getting shut down and things like that. So an opportunity comes up for them to actually move and work for the store. As it progresses, they kind of decide that maybe the store isn't our friend. And they actually take on the project of investigating the store and trying to expose the store for what it's actually doing. I thought it was kind of interesting to correlate to today's world because we are so heavily dependent on things like Amazon. Um, and Google and God, like you, you have a conversation in your living room about something and it shows up on your Facebook newsfeed. So it kind of makes you think about the correlation, I guess, which I thought was interesting and terrifying at the same time. It was a pretty easy book to follow. Like I, James Patterson was an author that I had never started reading. My dad loves to read James Patterson, but I had just never picked anything up by him. So this was kind of my introduction to his writing. I thought it was very easy to follow. I thought there was a, a you know, a, a decent amount of thrill and suspense, not too much, which I think he's kind of known for. That being said, I did look into other reviews after I finished it and people did not have very nice things to say whatsoever. I actually screenshotted some of them because I thought they'd be interesting to share. The first one is a one star that says, don't bother reading. I always look forward to reading the latest James Patterson book, but this one was a complete waste of time. I ended up skimming through the last half. The ending was stupid and this was not typical Patterson. The only good thing was that I borrowed it from the library and I could take it back. And the next two are the worst. They're both one star reviews. <laughs> Who wrote this book? <laughs> This is not James Patterson. I kept reading in the hopes that it had something of value and it doesn't. Patterson needs an intervention. Why would he put his name on this one? Premise had promise, but the story is contrived, the writing is amateurish, and the climax to finish is just plain stupid. Well, <laughs> I didn't think it was that bad, but I also don't have any exposure to any other novels by him. So maybe there is a night and day difference in this writing versus some of his others. That, and he was a co-author on this, so it doesn't seem like it's all him. I don't know. <laughs> I thought the story was interesting. If you're looking for just like a interesting perspective on something that I think is very related to today's society, it's it's a fun quick read or listen, depending on how you do it. I thought the ending kind of confused me a little bit. I will say that. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who does want to read it. The ending kind of happened very quickly and I was just kind of like, oh, that's it? All right. <laughs> like, it just kind of out of nowhere was over and um, resolved, but I don't know that I liked the resolution. Overall, I thought it was fine. Like, was it the worst book I ever l listened to or read? No. I'm sure there's way worse. So that's that. Another note that I wanted to add is that the narrator for this, Graham Halstead, I thought he was awesome. He had so many different voices for different characters that were distinguishably different that it flowed so easy. And his kind of snarky sarcasm and his remarks were very relatable. So I was 
it felt like somebody you knew was telling you the story. So I don't know. I just think he did a great job. And it kept it interesting to listen to. It wasn't flat. It wasn't monotone. It was, it was awesome. So yeah, those are my overall thoughts. So I'm not going to continue with Audible. I'm going to cancel that after this, actually. I am using Overdrive now, which is a database, I guess is a good way to put it. It's a database that you can access with a library card. So as long as you have a library card, I think most of the libraries in the U.S. have some kind of link to Overdrive. And you're able to enter your library card in the Overdrive app and browse your specific public libraries. Overdrive selection and you can rent and borrow books for nothing. There's audiobooks and there's ebooks and they even have some Kindle editions, which is great. So I am using that. I think the borrow time is like 14 days, um, which when you're a slower reader like me, that's a little bit scary. So I just have to get on my game. Some people do go on a wait list for certain books and there's only a certain number of copies available, so you're not really guaranteed to get it as soon as you might want it. That's, you know, working out fine so far, and it's free. So, like, there's nothing to really complain about. The book that I am currently listening to right now is The Diviners by Libba Bray. The size of the physical book actually scared the hell out of me. It's huge. It's, like, this big. <laughs> I saw it in the library, actually, and was like, mm, no. <laughs> But listening to it is awesome. I'm about a chapter into it, and it has this, like, spooky occult kind of background, and it's set in the 1920s, and it is just so cool. If that sounds like something that you would be interested in, I feel like I'm already going to tell you now. Just go listen to it or read it, because I think I'm going to love this. That's, I think, everything I had to say. Audible, thanks but no thanks. Um, the store by James Patterson, I didn't have any fish to fry with it. I think I'm still going to pursue other James Patterson novels just to see what the big difference is. And Overdrive has been bomb. So that is kind of my audiobook overview. I love audiobooks now. I think it just gives me another outlet to read and to absorb more and more books. I'm going to go cancel Audible now. And yeah. I thank you guys for hanging out with me and listening to what I have to say about audiobooks and all that jazz, and you're the best. So I hope you have an awesome day, and thank you so much for watching. This Happy Hobbit will catch you later. Bye!